When a car connects with the public, it earns a nickname that reflects on its speed, demeanor, or sheer dominance. Mention any of these to a true petrol head, and he'll know exactly what you're talking about. Simply because true nicknames are earned, not given. Welcome to Top Cars TV, and get ready for the top 10 cars with the coolest nicknames. Let's go. Number 10. Back in the day, some deranged Germans at AMG had a cool idea. Dude, let's strip down that Mercedes 300 SEL, bore the engine out from 6.3 to 6.8 liters, paint it red, take it racing, and let's see what happens. It sounds like the dumbest idea ever, because when was the last time you saw an S-Class with the racing stripes on it? What actually happened was quite extraordinary, because its huge engine meant huge speed, which made it finish second at Spa 24 hour race. However, due to its immense size and weight, it was gulping fuel and chewing through tires like some pig. A big red pig. Number 9 The way Roof CTR got its nickname was somewhat unceremonial. Photographers of Road & Track magazine noted its striking yellow paint against the dreary gray clouds. It looked like a yellow bird, but the reason why the name stuck is quite something else. You see, at the photo shooting, there were seven other super fast cars at the time, including the Porsche 959, and the deal was to find out which one was the fastest car in the world. Yellowbird easily outclassed them all. Zero to 60 time, zero to 100, top speed, everything. The world took notice, the name stuck, and one unknown car whose turbos sang like canaries turned into a legend. Number eight. Depending on which side of the pond you live, the magical word Daytona could mean two different things, a famous Florida racetrack or the grandest of the Grand Tours, Ferrari 365 GTB4. Coincidentally, it did get that nickname for that same track, where Ferrari achieved a 1-2-3 victory at 24 hours Daytona race 1967, beating Ford GT40s on their home turf just one year after Ford humiliated them with a 1-2-3 at Le Mans 24 hour. In commemoration of returning the favor, media applied the name to the then best Ferrari ever made, our 365 GTB4. A car that's as great, as beautiful, and as sweet as revenge. Deal with it. Number 7 Jeep is a nickname? Yes, it is. Because the original one was simply a reconnaissance army vehicle built by Willys and Ford. The latter one had GPW letters stamped on it, and that's where most people believe the name came from, slurring those letters. But it's NOT SO MAGGOT! Instead, soldiers were so impressed by its abilities, they actually named it after Eugene the Jeep, Popeye's supernatural pet, who, just like the vehicle, was small, able to move fast between dimensions, and can solve seemingly impossible problems. After World War II, Jeep remained a general term for any rough terrain vehicle, but Willys turned it into a brand name and continued production for civilians. Number 6 Volvos were always a byword for no-nonsense bluff design, huge trunks, and things like beige, geography teacher, slow. But it all changed in the early 80s when Volvo slapped the word turbo on it and made it blisteringly fast. There was just something so irresistibly cool about blowing past most of the performance cars and these ultimate sleepers, while hauling a fully assembled IKEA bed in the trunk. Who would have thought that a car with an aerodynamic coefficient of a brick could go so fast? But it did, even on a racetrack. What Volvo gave us at last was an irrational and stupid reason to buy one, and that is why we all love cars. Number 5. Like the name says, this German hot rod is nothing but a blunt tool made to flatten everything in its path. The Hammer was actually the fastest four-door saloon of the time and one of the very few cars at all that can go over 300 kilometers an hour. But even better than that was the coupe version with a bigger 6-liter engine and a meaner wide body kit, all dressed in black inside out, including the hood ornament. Its V8 burble coupled with those looks oozed a menacing attitude few other cars can match. It was because of this car that Mercedes signed an exclusive deal with AMG to be their official in-house tuner. Number 4 If you're the most powerful person in the world, you're not chauffeured around in simply anything. Someone might shoot at you. 
America knows that, so it purpose-built this Cadillac presidential limousine. Well, it says Cadillac, and it looks like one, but it's based on Chevrolet's Kodiak. Add to that an 8-inch armor plating, 5-inch layer windows, Kevlar reinforced run-flat tires, foam-protected gas tank, air-insulated interior, an arsenal of weapons ranging from shotguns to grenade launchers, and you've got yourself one indestructible tank, my friend, in a tuxedo. It may be slow, but once it gets going, nothing will stop the beast. Number 3 In 2003, Ford built the first supercharged Mustang, unofficially dubbed the Terminator by the development team. It was also the first supercharged muscle car out of Detroit. With an obscene 390 horsepower figure for its time, it single-handedly started a muscle car power wars, which is still raging to this day. But it wasn't just a straight-line bullet. With an independent suspension all around, it meant it could go left or right as well. In many ways, it was an insanity project just like the Dodge Hellcat. But with no Mustang to challenge it today, it might be the perfect time for the Terminator to be back. Number 2 Early 911s were notoriously difficult to handle because of all that engine weight hanging behind the rear wheels. Once that pendulum starts swinging, you will need superhuman abilities to get it straight again. Add a primitive turbocharging technology to the mix and you get the Widowmaker. The main problem was a huge turbo lag, which would keep you vulnerable to a sneaky but violent surge of power just a moment later. If you were in the corner when it hits you, you'd make a donut-shaped car around a tree. But if you manage to handle it and surf the boost, you'll be screaming from the top of your lungs from all the excitement and excrement. Number 1 when you're crushing everything in front of you with unstoppable force, you're either Godzilla, the monster, or Godzilla, the Nissan GTR. Because that's what happened in 1992, when Nissan decided to put some science and computers into their racing four-wheel drive, 600-horsepower Skyline R32. It won all 29 races on the calendar in Japan, then demolished at Spa 24-hour, then decimated the Australian continent. It was a monster. 25 years later, Nissan did it again with the GTR R35, but this time on the public roads. It terrorized Ferraris, Lambos, Porsches, and everything else that dared to stand in its way. It's a new but the same monster, Godzilla. Agree with the picks? Let me know in the comments and subscribe for more interesting videos from Top Cars TV.